A new survey out by a PR and lobbying company called Edelman shows trust in the media and indeed all establishment institutions is plummeting. Half of Canadians simply don't believe a word the media says. But look at this headline in the Toronto Star about it. Epidemic of misinformation is eroding trust in institutions and media finds a new survey. Just stop there. I mean, that's your whole story right there. The poll shows that people don't trust the media, and the headline in Canada's largest newspaper is, it's the people who are wrong. It's misinformation that causes people not to trust us. They would never for a second even think that they weren't trustworthy. No, 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 it's misinformation. And they threw in that word epidemic, because why not? I mean, people seem to get scared when you say pandemic these days, but that would be too on the nose to say pandemic, so let's just call it a epidemic. So people don't trust the media, and the media knows why they don't have to engage any, in any introspection. The people are stupid and gullible. That's why they don't trust the media. Otherwise, for sure, they'd trust the media. And their distrust of the media is not based on any good reasons. It's, it's like a sickness. It's like an epidemic, really. They need to be cured of it because, obviously, the media hasn't done anything to warrant being distrusted. Yeah, even if this headline shows exactly, it just, the headline alone, you don't have to read any more. It shows exactly why the media is so distrusted, isn't it? Information bankruptcy. That was the rather bleak assessment offered this week by Lisa Kimmel, chair and CEO of Edelman Canada, on the findings of the communication firm's 2021 trust barometer. Isn't that funny again? Uh, we are in an actual bankruptcy in Canada. Trudeau's racking up a debt to equal every other debt every previous prime minister ever incurred combined, including to fight, build a railway and fight two world wars. But it's an information bankruptcy that they want to talk about. They'd never say Trudeau is making us financially bankrupt. In Canada, trust in business rose to 61% in May 2020, but has since declined to 56%. Trust in government shot to 70% in May from 50% and has since declined to 59%. And trust in the media sits at 54% down from 58% last spring. So at the beginning of the pandemic, people looked to the institutions, to the government and the media for help, and they realized that the government and the media were of no help and couldn't be trusted and were pretty much just in it for themselves. I'd say that's not a misinformation pandemic. I'd say people are actually pretty perceptive. Nearly half of those surveyed in Canada believe journalists are purposely trying to mislead them by making statements they know are false or exaggerated. 52% think news outlets are more concerned with supporting an ideology than informing the public. And 52% think the media is not doing well at being objective and nonpartisan. My response is just 52% to 48% of people really think the media isn't false, exaggerated, or biased. This next line is my favorite. Think back on the last year. Donald Trump was a serial liar who made a campaign against the media a centerpiece of his presidency, denouncing news outlets as fake news and an enemy of the people. There were the endless lies around the outcome of the U.S. election, and we've seen the science and public health advice around COVID-19 falsely called into question. So Trump was a liar. Not Trudeau, not Theresa Tam, not Patty Haidu, not Doug Ford or John Tory or whoever. It was that evil Donald Trump. He's the only liar, and he's the reason Canadians don't trust Canadian media. Hey, guys, you're doing it again. You're doing the thing that makes people not trust you anymore. You're lying and exaggerating and running partisan errands for Trudeau again. I, I love how the star uses that same language about health and sickness and cleanliness and, and dirtiness. Only one in five Canadians have Good information hygiene. That's defined as uh, engaging with news, avoiding information echo chambers, verifying information, and not spreading information you haven't confirmed. So the CBC and the Toronto Star and the media party, you're expected to believe that they are not an echo chamber and that their one point of view is not a an outlier and they are not just spinning for Trudeau. I'm serious. When they say a news echo chamber, it's hard to believe, but they are not talking about themselves. Hey, can I give you a reminder about who the Toronto Star is? 
Toronto Star, Canada's largest circulation newspaper, is officially socialist in its orientation. It's hardwired right into its corporate constitution, actually. Uh, they call it their Atkinson Principles, named after their socialist publisher from about a century ago. You can find these Atkinson Principles very quickly on their website. They're proud of it. You can see the newspaper has broken them down into six different categories. I'll just quote from a couple of them. Here they're talking about social justice, redistributing wealth. The star publisher was certain that many of Canada's ills could be resolved by a fairer redistribution of the nation's wealth. Yeah, they're talking about socialism and just taking money and giving it. Here's an example. Um, he favored public ownership of gas, electric light, electric power, coal mines, oil wells, timber, pulp and paper, telephone, telegraph, radio, television, railways, airlines, and streetcars. Got it. All right, that explains a lot. The government should own all media, all communications, all factories, all utilities. Got it. It, it checks out. The Toronto Star is keeping to that mission. And they're certainly leading by example. I mean, the Star itself takes $110,000 per week, per week, from Justin Trudeau. So the thing about that, though, is that when a media company is owned by the government, people can sort of tell that it no longer holds that government to account. At best, it's play fighting, controlled opposition, as the kids say. Reading about the Atkinson principles, Atkinson styled himself as a gadfly against the governments of the day. He was a gadfly from the left, of course, but he was a pain in the neck for them. But whether you're right wing or left wing, if you are paid by the people you're covering, you don't really cover them anymore, do you? Except maybe covering them with kisses, as the Toronto Star does for Justin Trudeau. Such media like the CBC that has wholly being owned, wholly owned by the government since the beginning, they try to give the simulation of being independent and accountability oriented by going after, say, Donald Trump, even though Trump isn't the president anymore. They're still talking about him even in this article. They won't go after Joe Biden in the same way, of course. Listen, all politicians lie. They, they don't mention his lies, but mainly they don't go after Trudeau because Trudeau gives the Toronto Star $110,000 a week. So even in this article, they're railing against Trump. I'll be honest, if someone gave me $110,000 a week, I'd probably only have nice things to say about them too. But do you see my point? This is why no one trusts them. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.